damage that Russia has inflicted on Ukrainian people over the past month, things are going pretty badly for Russian troops and the Russian government. Now, new reports indicate that there is infighting between Vladimir Putin and his own intelligence officers. And this has actually led to the detention of a top commander in Russia's Federal Security Service. So let's get to the details as reported by the Wall Street Journal. The commander of the Federal Security Service Intelligence Agency's unit responsible for Ukraine had been placed under house arrest. The official in an interview also said bickering had broken out between the Federal Security Service and the Russian Ministry of Defense. Two of the principal governmental units or government units responsible for the preparation of the February 24th invasion. So just to give you a little more detail on who this person is and what the consequences have been, the FSB officer said to be under investigation and house arrest is Colonel General Sergei Beseda, head of the intelligence agency's fifth service, also known as the Service for Operational Information and International Communications, which operates as the de facto foreign intelligence arm of the overall agency. It would have shared responsibility for preparing the way for the invasion of Ukraine. So Putin is incredibly frustrated at how the invasion is going. He genuinely thought he'd be able to swoop in and just take control of the whole country within two days. And part of the reason why he thought that is because he's the kind of person who will hire intelligence officials and then get mad at them for telling him what he doesn't want to hear. So if the intel officials have intelligence that indicates that, hey, Putin, maybe you want to hold off. It seems like there isn't enough opposition to Zelensky's government within Ukraine for you to actually win this, Putin will lose it. In fact, I have a perfect example of that in just a moment, but first more details. Now remember, we're talking about a key player in developing the military plans for the attacks on Ukraine. He's being punished, he's on house arrest. Other reporting coming out of Russia also suggests that a second FSB official was placed under house arrest as well. The officials were interrogated for providing poor intelligence ahead of the invasion, according to Andre. Soldatov, he is a Russian security services expert. They were in charge of providing political intelligence and cultivating networks of support in Ukraine. He said in an interview, they told Putin what he wanted to hear about how the invasion would progress. And look, none of this is really surprising when you take into account the way Putin responded to his intel chief when he met with his security council just days prior to the invasion. He gets together with all these officials to hear what they have to say, whether or not they support invading Ukraine. There were a few who didn't really seem to be on board, but if they gave any hint that they weren't on board, they would be treated the way his intel chief was treated in this next video. Just watch. What was especially weird and creepy was the way he dressed down the head of his foreign intelligence service, Narishkin. Narishkin was sweating, he was stammering. Говорите прямо. Я поддержу предложение о признании. Поддержу или поддерживаю? Говорите прямо, Сергей. Поддерживаю предложение. Только скажите, да или нет. Да, я поддерживаю предложение о признании независимости. Хорошо, пожалуйста, садитесь, спасибо. Okay, this is a little bit of a tangent, but can you guys now understand why Putin and Trump seem to get along so well? I mean, even if there's no, you know, collusion when it comes to American elections, even if there's no wrongdoing in that regard, just like taking a step back and understanding why Trump admires Putin so much. Trump was very similar in that he wanted to be surrounded by a bunch of yes men, a bunch of people who just tell him what he wants to hear, even if that means it would lead to him being poor at his job, making decisions that were based on faulty intel. 
And that's what we have with Putin. Putin himself has been absolutely sure that he understands Ukraine really well, said Andrei Soldatov. He says that he expected his agencies and first of all, the FSB to do some groundwork like cultivating political groups that could provide support for the Russian invasion. And now obviously that's not what is happening. So not only is Putin frustrated at faulty intel, which by the way, again, these are people who were telling him exactly what he wants to hear because if they tell him otherwise, they might be punished. I mean, there's no winning in a situation like that. But he also wanted to basically help build groups within Ukraine that would not only consist of opposition to Zelensky and the Ukrainian government, but would assist the Russian troops in carrying out their invasion and overall the you know the outcome of controlling Ukraine and possibly implementing a puppet government on behalf of Vladimir Putin. Now, four Russian generals have died, the Ukrainian government says. Some US government calculations estimate as many as 7,000 Russian troops have been killed in action, though officials caution those are uncertain estimates. And look, I'm always hesitant to talk about death tolls, especially when they haven't been confirmed by third parties. 7,000 troops sounds a lot higher than what the reality is, but I don't know for sure. What I do know is Ukraine has come out with much higher numbers than that, and I don't believe those numbers at all. Do I think Russian troops have died in this invasion? Of course. We don't firmly know what the real numbers are yet, but what we do know for sure is that Vladimir Putin has grossly underestimated the will of the Ukrainian people and their unwillingness to just give up and allow him to take control of their sovereign country. So that's where Putin is today. He remains a little unwilling to soften his demands for a peace deal. However, the peace talk started with absolutely no flexibility on the Russian side. And now all of a sudden we're hearing about some possible concessions from the Russian side. So we'll see how it all plays out. That's where things stand as of today. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.